Hello everyone, it's Helen Griffin here and thank you for joining me today. So today it's day 3 of 12 days of Christmas and this is our project we're going to be making today. I'll be showing you how to make it step by step and um, it's a really cute little album. So it measures 6 by 5.5 and, and the spine is 1.5 inches tall and I've used gorgeous papers from first edition paper. All the supplies that I've, I'll be using today will be listed down below and there'll also be um, a matching blog post for this project. The link for that will be down below where this video and the cutting guide and the products I've used will all be in the same place. So the link for that will be down below. So this is all that listens and it's a beautiful pad, 12 by 12 pad. It's also available in eight by eight and I think six by six as well. And it's um, it's got double-sided papers towards the back. And I've taken quite a few out of here already. And towards the front, we have some lovely papers that have been treated. So this one's got the glitter. It doesn't shed, doesn't come off and some more glittery bits here and some foiling as well so it's really really pretty and it's nice good thick quality cardstock sorry paper right so let's have a look inside the album so it's got some split pages here with uh, some envelope pockets as well some nice little flat there then we have just a full page here it adds a bit of um, stability to the album as we flick through and then we have another pocket page here where the um, envelope's gone up on the top side instead of on the bottom. And then we have another page and then the envelope's on the bottom. And then we have another envelope on the end here and here. So I've got two options here. You could do a full, a full sized envelope to fit the whole entire back page. Or you could have one with a black frame around the outside. So this is actually quite an easy album to make. So let's move on. So you're going to be needing two pieces of black cardstock. I've got mine here. This is Premier Cardstock Black. I love this stuff. It's 225 GSM, so it's really nice and thick and sturdy. So let's grab a scoreboard. So I do like this one. This is by We Are Memory Keepers, and it has inches at the top and it has centimetres at the bottom and it trims and it scores so it does everything you need. also comes with the bone folder as well. Right so our first score line, let's give you the measurements for these first. These measure six by eight and three quarters and you'll need two of these. So the first measurement is going to be at five and a half. It's going to be quite difficult to see because I am using black cardstock but um, trust me, I'm doing this um, as I say I am. So the next one is five and three quarters. So that's going to give us a quarter of an inch gusset just there. I will hold this up once it's all been scored. The next one is at six and a quarter. Good thing about this board is that it has all of the tiny little measurements there written out for you. Six and three quarters. Seven, seven and a half, eight, and eight and a quarter. So here we go, it should look like that. So we have, these are going to be our binding hinges here. So we have the two half ones and the two half inches there. And these ones here are going to form our spine, the little quarter of an inch gaps. Right, so let's do exactly the same again. Five and a half. Go slowly, um, making sure that you measure in the right places. Five and three quarters. Six and a quarter. Six and three quarters. Seven. Seven and a half. Eight. And eight and... Whoop, there we go, almost did it, eight and one quarter. So, we can put this away now. This slides straight into there. Okay, so now we're gonna do some folding. So, as I said before, these two half inch sections here, and this one here, those are going to be our um, hinges. So let's fold those downwards first. So. The hinges, 
the hinge parts fold backwards and where we have the gusset they fold forwards so let's do the hinges first so those are already in place and now we're going to concentrate on folding over for the gussets and because they're quite close together some and the um, cardstock is quite hard hard not hard it's stiff because it's thick it's going to need a little bit of convincing to go where you want it to bone folder is practically essential for doing this so there's our first gusset it's put in so let's let's do this next one here that's part of the hinge there we go so we're going to be adding some glue to the back of the hinge here which we'll be doing after we've done all the folding and that is going to stand up just like so And then we have these quarter inches here are going to make our spine. So that will all become clear once I've done the rest of the folding. Yeah, don't rush this uh, stage either. There we go. Right, so we have our hinge there and then we can two more folds to add folding upwards because we're on the gussets press that down okay so this will become clear now these will go together like so so this only goes halfway through the binding so we have our other piece here we're going to do exactly the same folding on there and then these two are going to be glued together. So let me get this folded and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my two pieces here. So now we can glue these together. I'm going to be using Cosmic Shimmer. I love this stuff. And it's really strong as well and it dries quite fast. And it doesn't crinkle your paper, which is excellent. So let's stick these together try and keep them as straight up and lined up as possible okay. there we go it kind of looks a bit funny just like that it does look a bit funny at the moment but it will all come together once we've turned it over I've got everything sticking to my black cardstock today so we're going to turn it over and we're going to glue these gussets well, not the gussets but the binding bits together so it should end up I haven't got enough fingers but it should end up looking like so I'm sure you get the idea so let's glue all these together so I'm just going to add some glue along here you can use double sided tape I like glue We'll do two to start off with. Let's turn that over. Let's pinch that together. If you have uh, pegs or anything else that will stick this together and keep it in place for a little while, you can just peg them on just like so. I'm just going to um, fold mine down like that. Just press it down. Okay, so it should start to look like that. So let's do the other side. Exactly the same. Over again and press those closed. 
you can hear any funny noises, it's the rain. There's rain hammering against my window today. Very rainy. So yeah, this is a great time to put some pegs on there if you have them. But another trick you can do is just press it down like that. And this is especially good if you have fast drying glue, which I do have. So again, it's already starting to take. So we need to just firmly push down these fins and score them and press them in one direction. And then this is exercising them as these are going to be folding our pages and turning them over. They need to be quite flexible. Okay, so that's our binding done. A little bit of wet glue there so I'm just going to set this off to the side now to dry while we get on with the rest of the album. So we need to make our envelopes now. So I've recently got the one two three punch board. It's I bought it to replace the other boards that I have. I have the envelope punch board and I also have the box punch board, the gift box punch board. So this is going to replace those two and you can also make bows as well but you can make the bows with the envelope punch board but it is really nice to just have this one because you get a few extra functions as well. So with the envelopes you also get this extending arm for when you make your envelopes. You can make um, the extra long ones now so you can put a 12 by 12 in here and go all the way down to the bottom which is a really handy feature because before you'd have to be really careful when you're coming off the edge it still comes with the um, bone folder and you do get some extra sizes here on the envelope so um, I think it stops at six six and eight and a half six by eight and a half and you have all these extra sizes here it gives you the sizes for the bows and it gives you the sizes for the box as well and you have two score lines here Whereas on the envelope punch board you've got the one, you have two here so that you can make envelope um, boxes which is really good. So it also comes with this booklet as well, it shows you exactly how to make things. So it shows you how to make the envelope, it shows you how to make the box as well. So you have those two lines here, it shows you the bows, it shows you the boxes. And then even how to make envelope liners, the box with the string, file folder cards, so those are, those are going to be really good for mini albums, coin envelopes, there's so many things in here. So it's a lovely little booklet that comes with that. So I'm really happy that that's replaced um, my other two boards. It's saving me space as well. So we're going to go for the three by five and if you're working in metric it also comes with a sticker that you can stick over there and that will give you the sizes in centimeters so let's grab the bone folder so we're going for three by five and I'm going to need to do two and three quarters so let's pop that in two and three quarters so this is a really really good envelope punch board sorry the one two three punch board I really really like it and it kind of deserves its own um, video really because there's so much more that it can do so if you want a full demonstration on what everything this board does let me know down down in the comments and then I will do a full video so it's really hard in this light to see where this line is it's even harder with with patterned cardstock or paper so there is a line here so just line up your line here with that and this notch here it has to be lined up there and it also has to be on a full number here. So this is at four and a quarter. So punch and then score. Turn it round. And now we're back to our original measurement which is two and three quarters. So that should make the line up there. Punch score down <clears throat> and then we're back to four and one quarter so it lines up here and then score down so that's everything scored and then at the top we have the 
corner rounder here and then we have a tab here for the punch um, for the mm, the box that's the word I was looking for the box so it creates let's have a quick it creates that so you can close your box really really good so it's got everything on there that you need I can babble on for ages about this scoreboard punch and score Okay, that's everything. Let's get our envelope together now. So fold it up. Okay, so you fold it in like that, and then this goes up the top. You can leave it like that, but I want to have this tucked in underneath, so I'm going to fold it down backwards first to create a straight line. So I have these edges here that lined up there, I'll show you in a moment. I'll bring it up so you can see. I've lined it up so it's in line with those diagonals and now I'm going to add the glue. Just along here. Along there and then I'm going to add some glue to this outside part here. Okay, so I'm going to press these down and then I'm, before I press it down properly I'm going to fold that over and then I'm going to press it down. There we go. Nice neat envelope. So if you're using double sided paper you don't really need to make an envelope liner unless you add a plain one inside that would be quite nice. Right so I'm going to set that aside to dry. Always put the lid back on that. Right, let's grab our cover back again. So now we're going to do some preparation work. I've got my other two envelopes here. So grab your paper trimmer. I'm going to use a guillotine style. Sorry if that was a bit loud. And we're going to trim off just a slither to open up our envelopes on the left hand side. So I'm going to turn it over. through. Hold down firmly because it doesn't like to push down because there's quite a few layers of paper here and I'm going to take off that much and that's opened up our envelope. Don't freak out, it's all going to come together. So do the same on that one and the same on the one that we've just made. That's the prep for the envelopes done. So now we need to make the splits on the binding for our envelopes. So we need to make a cut into this um, binding piece here to the height of the envelope, which is two and no, sorry, it's three and three eighths. It's just under three and three eighths. Double check this one. That's three and a quarter. So you're going to have to custom, that's three and three eighths. So you are going to have to custom each one as you go along. So let's grab a ruler, which I have, and a pen. Go for green. It's just going to leave a little mark, just enough for me to see it. So the first, we're going to start at the back. So our first one, just double check our measurement here is three and a quarter. It's just a slither over three and a quarter. So I'm hoping you can see. Let's double check. You can see most of it. I know the black plays with the um, exposure. So that's three and a quarter. So we'll just go for three and a quarter and then we can always amend it. It's going to be really easy to fix if it's a little bit too short. Actually, if it's too short, it will fit perfectly. Right, so I've got my little pen mark there. I'm not sure whether you'd be able to see it, but I can see it. So at the pen line, take a, a strong pair of scissors here. Smaller scissors may not be able to go through all of this thick cardstock. So you can turn it around on itself and then cut straight up to the score line. 
like that so you've got a slit now and now we're going to taper the ends into triangle into a triangle there we go and then on each end we are going to do the same there we go so that's the back end we're using this one okay now test it before you add any glue your envelope should slide on nicely it should fit on the fin that we've just made and not stick out at the bottom which mine does just by a hair so this envelope needs to line up with this there so to make this a bit more spacious we're going to take tiny slither off the top half and then test it again so this is why you have to custom make this to each one that you put on there we go it now fits right so let's add our glue we are going to add glue to each side of the fin that we've just made I'm hoping that rain's going to stop soon because I've got to go on the school run in a few hours. I prefer it to rain on the way home actually than on the way there because then you don't have to worry about everyone getting wet and sitting in school all day with wet clothes, wet shoes. But they went with their wellies on today. Right, so let's slide this on. So we're going to slide this on in the upright position. And then we are going to fold it downwards so it's lying flat so we have the score line you can still see the score line should be exposed still and this bottom line here should be joined up and aligned with the back cover so once that's in place we can now press that down this this glue dries clear so there's no worries about that and just press it at the back as well press it down that's our first envelope flap done so now you're going to need to cut some more paper so let's find some from our scraps I'm going to go for this one we are going to cut it at two and a half I'm not even going to open this just yet so this comes out it turns around so now it is in the cutting position so we're going to cut this at two and a half so I'm going to have to open it now and then we're going to trim it at ten and three quarters there we go I'm not even going to score it again I'm just going to fold it in half back over now this is going to we're going to add glue all over here to glue the whole page together that's going to give it some strength and thickness and then that's going to get glued on just there so let's do that now Glue added to that side, and now we're going to add some glue just here. And there, hopefully, you can see my hands probably in the way. Right, so let's get this stuck on exactly the same way as we did the envelope, lining everything up with the top end. We want a gap between these two. So that they move freely without bashing into each other and then we'll stick that on there we go that's our first page put on and now we're going to move on to our second page so how i've done this with my pattern matching and colors it's all gold whites well it's not really white it's an off-white gold black and off-white stone creams <coughs> sorry 
Okay, so I have three pieces of paper here. I'll explain how I've pattern matched. So I've gone for the darker colours for the envelope and the flap, and I've gone for the lighter colours for the pages in the middle. So these measure ten and three ten and three quarters by oh I didn't write that down. Ten and three quarters by five and 15 sixteenths so there is a sixteenth of an inch there but don't worry everything's going to be written down for you so no score lines again we are just going to fold these in half just like so and then this simply gets glued on there but we need to prep our area first so we have to have our ends tapered there's more strength towards this end of the scissors here than here so it's easier cutting through thicker cardstock when you're further towards the handle okay so this is now ready to go on there and we're going to glue it on exactly how we did our top page so let's add some glue along here. Ah, and if my doorbell goes, I am waiting for a delivery from Craft Stash, so that should be today. So I may have to dash downstairs and answer the door. Right, so that's the glue on the binding. Let's glue this together now. You can theoretically turn this into a pocket if you want to. Don't close it just yet. Right, so slip this in. So it's meeting the score line of the binding that we're putting it on. Try and line it up as best you can before you start putting it together. Now line up the top and the bottom. So it's all straight, top and the bottom. And then press that down. And there we go. So we, now we have our full page here. There we go. So now what we've got to do is repeat this going along. So we're now going to have our envelope <coughs> at the top here. So let's measure this one. Over three, we'll do three and three eighths because it's a little bit over there. So grab your pen again, do three and three eighths. Whoops, we don't want that trying out. Okay, I can see my mark there. And snip in. And now we have the larger section along the top and the bottom section along the bottom. So I'm going to carry on doing the rest of this. If you um, do get stuck, just rewind the video and then watch this part again. If you're still a bit hazy about it, do leave me a comment down below and then I'll try my best to get back to you on that one. So I'm, I'll be back once I've added everything else. Okay, so I've added all of my pages in, so this is going to be the end of part one. And in part two, I'm going to be showing you how I finished off the inside covers, the outside covers, and I sort out the spine as well. So please join me very soon for part two.